Good morning. This is Ron. It is Saturday, May the 12th. Welcome to Storytime. Okay, so uh, while I was browsing uh, Facebook, I believe it was, well, yesterday, I came across what I consider to be a cultural weather vane. Um, there's a, a, it was a Facebook, I guess, live, where a woman on an airline was complaining about the service for this, of, of this airline, which was Spirit Airline, and was uh, deciding that she was not going to leave her seat. That some, there was some kind of a dispute about whether or not she could get on the flight, and um, she wanted, uh, I don't know, some kind of connection or some kind of, some, she had some kind of an issue, and uh, they basically bumped her off the flight, and so she decided, well, I'm going to stay on the airplane, uh, and she's going to film everything uh, while she's doing it. So uh, what eventually happened was that uh, the everybody on the plane was asked to deboard or uh, deplane, and uh, the police were called, and she uh, left uh, under her own power. She wasn't uh, dragged off or anything like that. So um, one of the things that uh, what struck me here is that w this woman is along the lines of this, the people that go to McDonald's, they uh, order something, the item is not available or it's not prepared properly, and so they call 911. Uh, those kinds of things. Where what they're doing is uh, using or trying to use power. What they're doing is looking at life. It's their their outlook, their life outlook that uh, for them, for these individuals, life is a constant struggle and life is a series of power struggles. And in this particular case with the airline, it's a power struggle between her and the airline. She's going to show them, she's going to punish these people for um, uh, disappointing her, in, in effect. And uh, rather than looking at the situation from the standpoint of right and wrong, uh, if what they did was wrong, then there are remedies for that. You can go up the chain of command, you can uh, post on uh, social media, Facebook, et cetera, about this. You can tweet. Very often the airlines will have people that, are, that will uh, reach out to you and try to make things right. You can contact the chief executive officer or any officer of the company. Uh, you can even go to a lawyer and see about filing a lawsuit. Uh, those are all issues of right and wrong. If you have the, the facts on your side, uh, then you know go ahead. If you, if you don't, then uh, you need to admit that you're wrong and uh, move along and learn from your, learn from your mistake and uh, move along. But instead, this lady looks at it again as a power issue that she's going to um, use social media as a way of bullying and intimidating the airline into doing what she wanted. Uh, in this particular case, it failed. But um, the airlines are as much at fault for uh, in promoting this, this kind of behavior as um, the as America anyone else in American counterculture. Uh, because the um, airlines very often succumb to this, where where the the indi an individual makes a film of uh, being mistreated and posts it on social media, and immediately the airlines uh, rush to make some kind of a settlement with this individual, uh, sometimes for large amounts of money, and uh, so other people see, hey, um, there's the possibility for me. Uh, what they see is that the individual exercised power and um, beat a large corporation, and they think they can do the same thing. Next time this uh, big corporation disappoints me or frustrates me, I'm going to act in a uh, way, I'm going to exercise power in order to get them to back down, change their mind, and very possibly um, award me some kind of a, a rich settlement. So, and it's wrong. Like I said, it is, life is really about right and wrong. Uh, when this lady goes home every night, I imagine she's probably exhausted because, again, if she goes through her day, each and everybody she comes in contact with is a power struggle. And that the only people she's going to get along with are the people that give her what she wants when she wants it. Then she's going to have a very long, 
uh, day. She's going to be battling with people from the time she gets up in the morning until the time she goes to bed at night. And then when she gets up in the morning, she's got to be asking herself, why am I doing this? What's the point? What's the meaning? Because there isn't any point or meaning. You do what's right, uh, avoid doing what's wrong, and then you find that your life has meaning. In this particular case, again, what would have been right if they say, you can't be on the flight, we're going to have to bump you off of it for whatever reason. Okay, who can I talk to about this? And go that direction rather than being defiant, going onto the airplane, sitting in her seat, and and telling everybody I'm not going to move. So when I come back, I'm going to is, uh, comment on a, another issue of Imprimus from uh, 2014, an article, actually it's a article of in an article of Renewing the American Idea by Paul Ryan. Okay, so I'm back, and uh, again, it's going to be uh, the July-August issue of Imprimus Magazine, reviewing, Renewing the American Idea by Paul Ryan. I'm going to give a quick review of his uh, article, but first uh, I want to do it in the middle of this article. is another smaller article, The Problem of Big by Jim DeMint, president of the Heritage Foundation and a former U.S. senator. And uh, basically the, the paragraph in here that's interesting, um, let's see, uh, so this is why so much of the criticism of special interests as such, is incomplete or even misdirected. Attacking special interests for accepting government favors is like criticizing a four-year-old for eating ice cream for breakfast. The proper targets of criticism are not the beneficiaries of the bad policy, but those in charge who acquiesce to their requests. The government agencies that provide the favors, the parents who allow their kids to eat whatever they want. And uh, basically, his article, again, is about, uh, he says, the problem of big, and in this particular case, the problem of big government. The other thing that he does, he does make a definition of uh, big. One of the problems of big, uh, big is an organization that has reached such a size that its continued existence and success is no longer contingent upon its quality of service, and which is a r rather vague uh, and uh, ambiguous uh, definition, and therefore, uh, fails. Uh, and definition is um, a genus with, I believe it's with specificity. But in any case, the point is he provides a rather obtuse uh, definition of what it is that he considers big. And then he goes on to, in his in this entire little article, he really puts himself in the position of being a neutral third party. And you're going to see this over and over and over again. Uh, people that are not news reporters that act like they're uh, news reporters or pretending to be news reporters by pretending to be objective third parties that have no stake in the outcome of the issue that they're uh, discussing. So for Jim DeMint, uh, who is president of the Heritage Foundation, I'm willing to, to bet that the Heritage Foundation is probably a, a lobbying organization. And if Jim DeMint isn't, if it isn't a lobbying organization, that he's probably um a lobbyist for one or more other lobbying organizations. And so what he does is uh, he doesn't come out and make any definitive statements in terms of what's right or wrong. He says that uh, so much of the criticism is incomplete or misdirected. Well, is it right or is it wrong? What, what, uh, which uh, pieces of the criticism are misguided or misdirected? No answer. Uh, attacking special interests for accepting government favors is like criticizing a four-year-old for eating ice cream for breakfast. And uh, that's not true. It's a bad analogy because neither of the parties, neither the government uh, person, the politician, nor the uh, special interest lobbyist are children. So, uh, so we're not, and we're not dealing with an issue of ice cream. We're dealing with issues of uh, billions and trillions of dollars and uh, significant amounts of power. And so that's a uh, rather ridiculous uh, comparison. And again, he needs to come out and make a statement. Is it right uh, to have special interests going out and um, seeking favors from government officials um, and having those government officials respond? Is this, this uh, process okay? Is it right or is it wrong? 
uh, and he doesn't come out and make that statement. What he does do is he tries to muddy the waters. What is really should be a fairly clear issue, either what is going on here is legal, moral, and ethical, or it isn't. And uh, so what he tries to do is muddy the waters by suggest or suggesting that the whole situation is more complicated. For instance, uh, he says, the proper targets of criticism are not the beneficiaries of the bad policy, but those in charge who acquiesce to their requests, the government agencies that provide the favors, the parents who allowed their ch kids to eat. Uh, and that also has a deterministic uh, quality as well, that the uh, people that the ch child is four years old um, is forced to eat ice cream for breakfast because of the power of his parents. His parents, um, by what they do or what they do not do, are forcing this kid to have ice cream. Even at four years old, he's still got his own uh, free will. Now, he may not be exercising good judgment. But again, that's why I'm saying that this four-year-old comparison is really bad. When you're dealing with adults, everybody has free will. Uh, we know by the evidence of our senses that everyone has free will and that um, you cannot say it is the gov government forces you the government may allow you to uh, present a lobbyist. I don't have a lobbyist. And the government doesn't come to me and say, Ron, where's your lobbyist? Uh, where's your uh, special interest group to represent your interests? Okay, so they don't force anybody to do it. Uh, there is the opportunity they present, uh, the government does, the politicians uh, present the opportunity for uh, a lobbyist or lobbying organizations to approach them about getting uh, special favors or uh, getting special laws set up, but it's not forced. And uh, since everybody has free will, it is both parties are at fault. The, the politician that uh, permits this and encourages it and uh, the person that uh, goes ahead and um, accepts the um, invitation by the politician. It's really more akin to a prostitution situation. Who's at fault, the, the John or the prostitute? And he is saying, well, uh, it's really the prostitute's fault for offering the services. No, the prostitute's the fact she offers services doesn't force somebody to become a John, okay? She offers the services, the vast majority of men uh, walk away and uh, continue about their lives. They don't accept that. A small percentage of men uh, go ahead and uh, acquiesce, either because they're incontinent or uh, because they're vicious. And uh, so it is the John that is equally at fault for participating in and accepting what it is that the prostitute is offering. And the same thing goes with the government. They're adults. Uh, the, just because the government offers something doesn't mean that the lobbyist has to accept it. <clears throat> so, um, and then uh, Paul Ryan's article, Renewing the American Idea, is very much uh, the same kind of uh, situation where he's um, talking about uh, big government and uh, its faults, but he does so in a very uh, neutral way, as though he has no stake in the matter, as though he's not only not the um, Speaker of the House, but that he's not a member of Congress, and then he's not even a citizen of the United States, that he's from perhaps some other country or maybe even some other planet uh, who stopped by to uh, offer a, a uh, objective perspective on this particular situation. And I assure you he's not, and he's wrong for writing the article this way. He could make a lot, um, he could make um, an impact, a much bigger impact, have much more influence by coming out and making value statements, by coming out and saying what is right and what is wrong, boldly and unapologetically. Uh, it's like what Ronald Reagan said. There are bold colors, no pale pastels. And that's what he meant by it. These bold colors means uh, that we, we acknowledge that there is right and wrong and uh, we act accordingly. So that uh, concludes this episode of Storytime. And until tomorrow, thank you very much for joining me.